everyone. Welcome back. You're still with us here on the Sea Morning Show. It is quarter past seven in the a.m. and it's time for our first discussion of the morning. Now, in response to the viral case of online loans for paying tuition fees at Itebe, the Ministry of Finance is currently considering a student loan program through the LPDP Endowment Fund. That's right, Paul. Finance Minister Sri Mulyani Indrawati announced that the government through the Education Fund Management Agency or LD, LPDP is currently exploring student loan plan <laughs> due to the increased financing needs for education. Indeed. Now, this discourse arises in response to the phenomenon of students resorting to online loans based on fintech lending at the Bandung Institute of Technology in order to pay for their tuition fees. However, the government is proceeding cautiously considering the negative repercussions of similar plans implemented in the United States. Yeah, I got a lot. You want to talk a little bit about this? Yes, this is yes. Something very we'll interesting. Into. Yes, definitely. All right. So let's uh, get into our first discussion of the morning. As joining us in the studio today is Celio's Director of Public Policy Media, uh, Wahyudi Askar. Good morning, Mas. Thank you for being morning. with us Thank here you, today. Mas Media. I love the name, by Mas the way. Mas Media. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I, I, I tripped that. me up there for I a second. Like, <laughs> media? Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, Mas, let's talk a little bit about this uh, new phenomenon. It's yeah. uh, not new to Indonesia, but that's because Indonesia currently, uh, could you explain to our viewers perhaps, is there a, a student loan program currently in place by the government? A formal a student loan program, I don't think so. No, okay. But there was initiative years ago. Correct. Around 1980s. Okay. okay. had that program called Kartu Mahasiswa Indonesia. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, but it was failed. Okay. At that time, so mm -hmm. after that, uh, they don't we don't really have an initiative on uh, about the student. Mm -hmm. So I wanted I wanted to kind of share with you because well, we both you know brought up one in Canada, one in the United States, uh, but both of my siblings have two different uh, student loan. One, uh, my sister, she has the student loan by the government, so the. Yeah. The, the funding itself goes straight to pay off the school until yeah. four years. Right. But my brother, uh, Christopher, he went to UC Long Beach. He got a scholarship, so basically from a private sector, okay. who pays off every month. Not, uh, so it's a equivalent to a money that he needs, so it's either for his education or whatever that he needs to do mm. to strive okay. within that month throughout four years. So there's this, you know, kind of like different kind of scheme and plan That's right. in the United States. And there's some from the schools directly themselves as yes, well, right? Yes, yes. Okay. What is yours in Canada? Um, it's the same thing. So there's a student loan program from, from the government, but there's also student loan programs at the uh, universities mm -hmm. or colleges that are available for students. Yeah. You have to qualify for it, first yes, of all. Right. And the terms are quite unique because when we think of loans like mortgages or even cars, there's a pretty, I would say, uh, a definite uh, uh, year or duration that yes. you're going to have to pay it off. But when it comes to student loans, some of no. my friends are paying off student mm -hmm. loans even to this day in mm -hmm. their late 30s or even yeah. close reaching yeah. their 40s. Yes. Yeah, so I want to talk about that in regards to my sister who got a student loan by the government. Uh, it took her about 13 years. Actually, this year, 2024, she finalized her student loan. That's about 13 years. Yeah. She holed up her wedding. Uh, because she said this would affect my my credits, yes, so yeah. I need to you know finalize this. Her credit I need to pay score, up. right? Her credit yeah, score, yeah. her social security <laughs> card, whatnot. It's all going to be in effect. But it took her 13 years, and she kind of kind of have a stall in her life yes. for that 13 years. Yes. You can't run away from it. It's like a shadow that's following you all the time. Do you think this is ready for the Indonesian citizens? Are the students ready, or even the ecosystem is ready for it too? Yeah, when we talk about student loan, it's yeah, definitely one of the alternative way for education financing. And we talk about accessibility. I didn't. I, I think Indonesia need more like a higher enrollment rates. Okay. But we cannot really compare Indonesia and the UK and the US mm -hmm. because we are just different. Okay. So in terms of the accessibility, whether it can improve the accessibility on higher education, that's a big question. Okay. Because. Uh, higher tuition fee is one of the issues in the country, but that's not the biggest issue. Okay, what is? Inequality in education. Okay. Mm. So if we have like a very good university everywhere in, mm. the, in this country, we're going to have like a lower tuition fee. Of sense. course. Yes, because like for me, myself, I need to travel. I grew up in West Sumatra, a very remote area in West Sumatra. I need to go to Yogyakarta to get a very good university. Right. The impact is that the tuition fee would be much lower because it's very far away from my hometown. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. I need to pay more transportation costs and yes. so forth. Of course. Housing. Exactly. So, so again, it's an intense, intense debate right now. 
but I think the US, like you said, is a very good example of how student loans should be managed because it creates a bubble yeah. later on. Correct. And, and when you have these long durations like um, 15 years to pay off a loan or 20 yeah, years yeah. even to pay off a loan, this tends to build up because every year you have fresh graduates as yes, well that yes. have to start uh, uh, working in, in their own respective industries. There are many research on this and, okay. and one research says that people delay life milestone because <laughs> yeah. of the student loan. Yes. Go. So they delayed getting married, starting business, and that's the kind of thing that currently happen in, in many developed countries. Okay, so knowing that there is uh, at least data that we can kind of work off of from other countries that have already implemented this sort of system for yeah. years now, yeah. What sort of student loan system do you think is uh, suitable for students yeah. here in Indonesia, considering that we, not everyone has access to all the best yes. schools in their respective areas? Theoretically, student loan is a market failure. I mean, like, one of the solutions for that is that the government shouldn't involve too much. Okay. So, meaning that let the market work. I love the fintech ideas, mm -hmm. like it's digital, quick and easy, right? Sure. And the government should just simply support them with the regulation. Okay. So never ever in the situation that the government, in, the, in this case it's a public university, mm -hmm. pick up one provider mm -hmm. and then systematically push their own student to choose that provider. I see. Because it creates uh, inefficiency. And you know, if there is a monopoly from one provider, the service will be lower okay right? will be very very poor so that's the idea i mean like of the student loan we can build the student loan system as long as it goes to the market or free market let the market works without the government intervention at all so apart from the regulation theoretically then if i was a new student and i'm yeah. trying i need a loan I have a selection of uh, uh, different finance companies that I can choose yes. from yes, um, and an they can compete with each other in regards exactly. to interest rates exactly. and things of that sort. So, yeah. So market efficiency will, will go, will, will get that because it creates innovation and even for the fintech lending or the provider itself, they may be more cautious, cautious, cautious yep. not to give the money to the people who cannot repay the back. High risk, on. Exactly. The high risk so, lenders. Yeah, so, more yeah. competitive. Yeah. Is this even, um, like just in general, uh, yeah. in your opinion, is it even a, a good thing for Indonesian students to have an option to borrow? Because we in, here in Indonesia, even with the, uh, the presence of online loans and fintech and all of that sort, a lot of it has been uh, abused. Some people are not good at, at understanding yeah. how to pay back. Are we, like Caroline said, are we even ready for something like this in your That's opinion? something we have to consider as well, mm -hmm. okay. including the culture. Yes. yes. True. But the good thing, I just want to be optimistic. Mm -hmm. Like Indonesia <laughs> is one of the most generous countries in the world. Yeah. That's what research said. Meaning that there is a support system around yeah. us. Just like me, myself, like my right. family give me some money. Yes. Sure. Right? With zero interest rate. Right. Yes. And then I, apart from that, I got like a mentorship, mm -hmm. like family support. Mm -hmm. yeah. They give me advice, not only money. Yeah. And then I don't need to pay back the money even. So, so that's kind of thing that actually we have so many alternatives mm -hmm. to enter the university. Mm -hmm. And we got scholarship, we can find the yeah. scholarship. I got the scholarship for my bachelor, my master, my PhD. Really? And yeah, it's possible. No, so how did you do it? And why is this not some like way <laughs> for a student yeah. to see and approach yes, your kind of yes. way? Actually, the government has done very well. They open up all the opportunities. In regards yeah. to scholarships. Exactly, and okay. the scholarship. So, I entered the university without the scholarship. I just simply like study hard and then mm -hmm. I become the best. Uh, and then I have more chance to get the scholarship. And they offered yeah. you. Exactly, exactly. So there are actually so many opportunities out there. Hmm. Even without scholarship, we can still survive. I can, uh, I, there are many uh, right. people like they run business, you know, mm -hmm. during the the university. Yes. You know, the, the more. I mean, yeah, that's right. I mean, students, are, especially now the generation, yes. they're just more yes. uh, creative of making businesses exactly. on their own. But in regards to that, I'm really curious about scholarship. How does scholarship really, uh, the system here in Indonesia, because I'm really not aware of it. Yes, uh, PDP, if you've heard that, like you said before, mm -hmm. is one of the biggest scholarships in the country because it is provided by the government. Okay. So the government offers the scholarship and people can apply. Okay. What I like with LPDP is that it ensures the inclusivity. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. meaning that everyone can apply. Okay. But the government try to put some like priorities for those who are from low income family. Okay, they so prioritize the those checks. that need it exactly, more. Okay. Exactly. Oh. So, so that's the thing because there are so many smart students, but they just simply cannot access uh, a higher education because they yeah. cannot fight. You yeah. Know, like they, they cannot compete. Mm-hmm. But so that's why how the government should help them, train them how to speak English, how to, you know, oh. I mean, like so they can apply for the university abroad with uh, a, a scholarship. high profile. Because universities in uh, abroad has a lot of scholarship programs. Absolutely. Yes. But you need to make an essay, you uh, have to do a one-on-one interview mm-hmm. sometimes and share about your stories. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's where it's kind of like... And I would say that not every school uh, is looking for those to give opportunities to those that are more in need. They want to choose what's best for the school as well, yeah, that's right? right. Yes. And I would argue that schools here are for higher education Probably a lot more affordable than overseas as well, um, in many in many ways when it comes to even expenses and things of that sort. So, getting back to those that actually need loans here in Indonesia, how do we then um, help to mitigate the risk of loan defaults? Because we know that that is likely to happen in some cases. Is there a way to lower those chances? I finished my PhD on financial literacy, okay. mm-hmm. so that's the thing that I think the government should aware of. We don't really have the system, the curriculum that allows people to learn about how to manage the money. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what's the meaning of interest rate? How to calculate it? So that could be one of the entry point. Okay. So that we can improve the youth youth financial literacy. Mm-hmm. That's a very uh, significant one. Yeah. Apart from that, we just simply have to open up all the opportunities for the people to enter the uh, the university and allow them to apply the scholarship and there are many ways I mean like to enter the university right now so to open up the public private uh, collaboration as well and internship program is also could be one of the solution mm. so yeah student loan is one of the alternative education financing but there are many other alternatives. It's not the only one. It's not the only one. Mm-hmm. And given the current situation, there are so many unemployment rate. Mm-hmm. And you know, the growth of unemployment rate increased significantly, especially for those who are university graduated. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, what is happening to that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why, why, yeah, why is that? What's that phenomenon? Mismatch skills. Um, uh, so what they finish be, studying is, is yes, not necessarily what really they can have employ themselves. That, uh, yeah. And apart from that, the quality of education. Uh, a lot like, of factors. Yes, l- poor quality of like uh, the lecturer as well. Oh, uh, and, okay. and the lecturer only got paid less than uh, minimum wage for Jakarta. Yeah. yeah. Like for me myself, I'm a, uh, I'm a PhD holder. My basic salary for public university in Indonesia is less than four million. Okay. Excuse Can you me. Imagine that's that. yes, minimum okay. wage. So, yeah. so that's the thing that we should, yeah, we should think about it. So, so it's a deeper rooted problem mm-hmm. than just what we see on the surface, yes. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes. And in regards to that, uh, I'm still in awe right now with the numbers that you just mentioned to yeah. us. But it's just yeah, like mm-hmm. you were mentioning before, this is actually not the core of the problem. There are so many problems that you need to tackle. Mm-hmm. But in regards to the uh, the student loan that is now being apprehended by the government, also by the finance minister, who's trying to adapt the model like the U.S. system, yeah. um, how do you think that this could be applicable in a way, or how we can at least model it? to a certain point where Indonesian, it could be perceptive to to Indonesian citizens. The biggest benefit for us as well, right? Yeah. That's a very difficult question. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because we, but we can learn from Thailand. Uh, Okay. Thailand has two types of student loan. Okay. A student loan fund, where the government uh, acts as a guarantor for the the loan. And the second one is an income contingency plan. What is that? Uh, Like, uh, people later on pay the, the, the debt Based via on the tax income. system, via tax system. Ah, okay. Yes. yes. So they receive income, they, 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 they automatically deducted by the loan services. Program. Again, it will be based on what you'll end up earning. Exactly. So exactly. if you're not earning anything, you don't have to pay anything exactly. yet. Yeah. Right. That is actually really smart. Yeah. But, yeah, but in Thailand, like the research says that 48% of the borrowers got defaulted. Oh, okay. So oh, good. 
So there's the pros and cons like, between yeah, everything, right? Yes, yes. So uh, we can say that it's fail, right? So, yeah. so that's why we have to think carefully. Yeah. I mean, I think that of to, on, on this part, the government just simply have to uh, strengthen the ecosystem of fintech lending okay. and then let the market work. Yeah. Uh, so that people have the option. The government shouldn't involve too much. Okay. So for, for private university, if, if they want to collaborate with the fintech lending, let it go. But for public universities, uh, the government should think twice. Okay. Uh, because the public university goal, one of the goal is to ensure inclusivity, accessibility, and affordability of education. So public university has to support the student Public university, university cannot just simply treat the student as a customer. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. So that could be the best scheme for our country. Let the market work. Mm. Let the market work. What's the worst thing that can happen if a student defaults on a student loan? I mean, if this sort of system is in place, a student is unable to pay back the student loan, how can this affect them in the long term? Productivity. So if we have lots of loan, we delay everything. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, we delay investment and then it affects the overall economy of the country. But that will be a chain reaction then to everything else, right? Because yes. if it affects productivity, then it yes. affects the industries yeah, as well. It affects the industry, it weakens the consumer spending. Mm -hmm. uh, if people don't spend, you mm -hmm. know, the impact is the yeah. economic growth. It's going yeah. down. It's a vicious cycle, yeah. isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. I just don't know how to implement it because back in the United States, it will affect your credit score. And then yes. your credit score, you have everything. You can do your housing, everything that is going to do anything with your so finance. So you're motivated to pay that of because course. you don't want your low credit Nobody score. Nobody wants to run from your, your from, from your debt because of student right. debt because of, uh, mm -hmm. because of your credit. I don't know how it would apply here in yeah. Indonesia. But things have changed. changed. The, the United States, I think, started the program around 1960, 1970. Mm -hmm where there was no digitalization in education. But now things change and we have online education. Correct. Yeah. That could be one of the solutions. Yep, you can do your schooling through correspondence. Exactly, exactly. And you know one of the biggest universities in Indonesia? University Indonesia? No. No? Universitas Terbuka. Universitas Terbuka. No. That he, uh, he has a largest student in Indonesia. Really? Is that right? And then you can pay only like 2 million rupees per semester. Wow. Universitas right Terbuka. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. Mm. You get the degree, you get the skills, it solves everything, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. so there are many ways because things change. So we cannot just simply follow the United States. Mm. Yeah. We can learn from them. Yeah. For sure. But we just have to be careful. Yeah, because we understand yes. how the system works here. Indeed. So we should adapt it here. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Nice video. Thank you so much. <laughs> I wish you have more time we with don't you. Know, we don't know enough about this topic, especially the way it <laughs> yeah. relates to students and their behaviors here in Indonesia as well. So we hope that whatever system does get implemented, it is in the best interests of the students because we do want them to be productive yeah. and have a great future, debt-free. Yeah, and just like you, Mas, uh, Media, you are truly a role model. I mean, mm. seeing you, you, you have to go outside of your, you know, your region for you to get your attain your education and look where you are right now a Absolutely. PhD older love that mm. thank you very much for your time Asmini. thank you thank you and we're up for another uh, commercial break when we return we'll bring you updates from around the world station we're here on the Seymour Show only on C today